Hey looters, Flutes here. Today I'm going to talk about what I believe are the best feats for artificers to really complement what they are best at. Today on Flutes Loot. If you want to read this information instead of listening to the video, or if you want both, bookmark the article for yourself later if you're building an artificer so you can reference it there. In other words, I already took the notes for you. So this video will be a little bit different from my other feats articles because I find the artificer already to be a very self-contained and versatile class, and so it doesn't necessarily need feats even, but feats can help it have some fun. I'm going to actually go by artificer subclass to give kind of a few builds of feats that I think would be helpful for you. I'll go through the artificer subclasses in alphabetical order, starting with the alchemist. I'm only going to recommend four feats because I find you're probably going to want some stat boosts from at least one of your ASIs. And beyond these feats, there's going to be some like split down the middle where you could pick one or the other, which you could pick both if you have enough feat slots, obviously. And if you're going to have more feats somehow, um, maybe you're a variant human, you can just pick something else that makes sense to you. Sounds fun. But yeah, my recommendations will just be four per subclass. The Alchemist is notorious for being supposedly the weakest artificer subclass, but it has some cool concepts and there are some feats that can complement what it does. The first concept I invented for the Alchemist is the Experimental Support Alchemist. With this, you're going to take the Fae Touched feat and learn the Bless spell with that. Next, you're going to take Shadow Touched, pick a spell of your choice, honestly. Then get Magic Initiate, again, spell of your choice. Maybe get something you don't normally get as an Artificer from the Wizard spell list, since it'll use your intelligence like you already do as an Artificer. Or if you are of a lineage race that has a racial feat that could give you some spells too, maybe go with that one. The goal is to just learn lots of spells with this feat build. And then lastly, Healer, because Alchemists are good at dealing damage with alchemical damage types like fire and acid, poison but they also can heal. And so you want to be a healer support character. Your experimental elixir that you get as an alchemist already has a semi bless effect that you could get from it. So stacking that with the bless spell, since it's technically two different things and it wouldn't be an overlap of the same effect, you could be adding 2d4 to help an ally. I've got a few other notes on this if you want in my article, if you want to check that out and see what you can come up with. The second alchemist theme I came up with, and I'm sorry about this one, is the mad scientist. You'll see why I apologize. First, again, you get Fey Touched as a feat. You can choose either Bless, Gift of Alacrity, or Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And I say Tasha's Hideous Laughter specifically for this one because what is a mad scientist without some mad laughter going on? Next, take Metamagic Adept and choose Careful Spell or Distant Spell. Then the Elemental Adept feat with the Acid option. And then the Poisoner feat. Your goal with this feat build is to create poisons and acids to help your allies. You're gonna coat not your own weapons in poison, but your allies, which the poisoner feat will allow you to do very quickly and efficiently. And then the main spell I wanna concentrate on with this build is Tasha's Caustic Brew. I'm not saying this is optimal, but it sounds fun. Maybe I'm a little biased because I did play the Unearthed Arcana Artificer years ago, and one of the main things it did was just throw acid at people. So I guess I want to relive that with the official artificer. Keep in mind that Tasha's Caustic Brew does take concentration. So spells like Bless or Tasha's Hideous Laughter, you might have them, but you need to be careful when you want to use them. From Fey Touched, I mean, if you remember me mentioning that. Your alchemical savant feature is going to boost the damage output of Tasha's Caustic Brew, once per casting at least. You can potentially rack up a lot of damage if enemies don't pass their deck save or they don't take an action later to cleanse themselves. Again, not an optimal option I would say, but if you've been playing D&D a long time like me, you might be hungry for some less than meta options, let's say. And again, use Poisoner as a bonus action to poison your allies' weapons so they just deal more damage. And then cast your support spells and whatever else you want to do. I think a lot of people think of the Poisoner feat as you poisoning your own weapons. So they say, oh, well, as a rogue, your bonus action's already busy or whatever. Or you're an archer and so you already want crossbow expert so that you can do a bonus action attack. But if you're bonus actioning to poison other people's stuff, <laughs> I'm sure they don't mind. The next subclass is the Armorer, which is admittedly a kind of weird subclass in D&D 5th edition. You get heavy armor and you can ignore the strength requirements and so you can kind of be this armored juggernaut on the battlefield who's very smart and not beefy. You're also still an artificer so you're only getting d8s of hit points and so be careful. But here's the feats. This first one is for if you want to focus on the guardian armor features and then I'll do the infiltrator armor next. 
Sentinel, Warcaster, Dual Wielder, Reserve Judgment, I have a reason, I know it's a bad feat, and then either Lucky or Resilient, choosing Dexterity Wisdom. So the hit point issue is semi-solved by your subclass Defensive Field feature, so that's at least something, giving you some more survivability. The Sentinel feat is so you can use your Thunder Gauntlets to distract someone while they have disadvantage to hit you, but they also can't get away from you because you're going to Sentinel stop them in their tracks. You might say, oh, they're going to attack me then. I was like, yeah, they'll have disadvantage and you have some temporary hit points, so it's not the end of the world. And I think you'll be okay. Warcaster enables you to cast Green Flame Blade as an opportunity attack. Why not Booming Blade? Because Sentinel's going to stop them from moving, and so it won't get all the extra damage it does, so might as well just switch it up. Lucky and Resilient are just there to help you survive, you little D8 juggernaut. Now, Dual Wielder. Usually a horrible choice, one of the worst feats, I think, not because it's the actual worst feat, but because it's also a trap that people choose not knowing that it's very suboptimal. So why? Why flutes are you recommending it? I noticed something with this subclass that intrigued me. It seems that you could potentially wield a shield while still effectively wielding two weapons because your gauntlets count as simple melee weapons. I know you're not technically holding them, so it is some DM discretion whether they're going to allow dual wielding to be used with those. But if they're okay with it, you'll get a plus one to your armor class from dual wielder and the other dual wielder bonuses, and you can still wield a shield. So that's a plus three you can get. You might already be wielding a shield, so it's really just like a plus one to your armor class and some versatility to use your thunder gauntlets more. But then you also have to ask if it's okay while you're wielding the shield, wearing the shield, to attack with your gauntlets like you're dual wielding. You know, that's kind of the thing. And so, like I said, DM discretion, big time, but it could be fun. So the infiltrator armorer, what recommended feats do I have? Sharpshooter, crossbow expert, Fighting Initiate for Archery Fighting Style, and again for your survivability, Lucky or Resilient Dex Wisdom. You basically become a Lightning Sniper with a Hand Crossbow and Heavy Armor in this case. You honestly might want to be a Battlesmith instead with this concept, but let's see what we have here anyway, if you want the armor instead. Sharpshooter allows you to do extra damage with your ranged attacks with your Infiltrator Armor, and you won't have disadvantage on attacks for up to 300 feet, so that's a pretty big range. You can also cast Fly as an Artificer, so you could rain lightning down from the sky like your Zeus himself. Crossbow Expert is debatable here. It gives you a bonus action to attack with your hand crossbow, but you're not using your Intelligence modifier for your hand crossbow, in this case, like a Battlesmith could. The Archery Fighting Style from Fighting Initiate is obviously helpful for Sharpshooter, and that's about it. So Infiltrator, you can have some fun as a lightning sniper basically i know that you could technically say it's best to get some of the feats that i recommended for the alchemist to get like uh more spells from fate touched or shadow touched and then you can boost your initiative or bless people and all that stuff absolutely but i i wanted to go over subclass specific ones and have some fun and see what they're capable of next is the artillerist subclass i'm going to go over a general artillerist and then a pyromaniac artillerist the artillerist is again a pretty self-sustained subclass i'd say it's second to the battlesmith debatably better just based on your play style so my feet recommendations are going to supplement what the artillerist already does well and the artillerist does synergize with the base artificer in that it helps with healing or damage which the artificer can definitely use some synergy for so the general artillerist fate touched to get gift of alacrity resilient dex and wisdom again maybe that's the best one alert another boost to your initiative and lucky or warcaster you want to get your cannons in position in the right places as soon as battle starts so we're trying to boost your initiative up with gift of alacrity from fate touched and alert between the two you're probably going to be getting like a plus nine plus ten to your initiative bonuses before your dexterity you'll also be able to boost your intelligence and get misty step which is always handy to have resilient can help you round out a stat and help your defenses it can help you with your dexterity or wisdom saving throws while if you want lucky or warcaster then they can kind of buff your concentration constitution saving throws because you don't want to lose concentration you have some good spells as an artillerist artificer so don't lose concentration and then the pyromaniac artillerist they're going to choose elemental adept for fire flames of phlegathos for fire again so i'm actually going to recommend you be a tiefling for this type of character so you can pick flames of phlegathos fey touched to learn hex and then lucky or alert as your fourth one so elemental adept and flames of phlegathos are obviously meant to augment your fire damage and allow you to overcome fire damage resistances from monsters You'll get a constitution or intelligence boost, which is also nice. They don't help your cannons, these feats, but they do help your spell casting, so it's important to understand that. Unless your DM is okay with boosting your cannons too, well, that'd be pretty cool. One of your spells that's gonna be your bread and butter is Scorching Ray, and you're able to combo that with Hex. 
because each Scorching Ray is its own attack roll, so it's kind of like you're a Warlock to an Eldritch Blast, but with Scorching Ray and using a second level spell slot. Won't always be the best use of your concentration, won't always be your best damage output, but again, I just kind of want to do a bunch of fire damage like you're a mad pyro. And I know Hex will compete with the bonus action that you need to activate your cannons, so I'd only use Hex if you're going up against like a single bad guy that you're not going to have to switch your Hex to different enemies throughout the battle, or if you're not using your cannons or something like that, just keep that in mind. In a tight spot, you can have Lucky to make sure that your scorching rays do hit when you're trying to really dish out damage and it's like a clutch moment do or die otherwise maybe save the lucky feet for something more defensive or if you don't want lucky take alert again you want to get your cannons in a good spot and you want to do your pyro stuff before others can act Lastly is the Battlesmith Artificer. This subclass makes waves because it allows you to use intelligence for attack rolls with all your martial weapons and everything. You're basically able to do what fighters can do. So you're able to do what some low level martial classes can do. You get extra attack, but you don't have to invest in strength or dex if you don't want to, because you can just do intelligence. As long as you're attacking with a magic weapon, I should clarify that. But you have artificer infusions, so you can make weapons magic. So first, if you want to build a ranged attacking battlesmith, crossbow expert and sharpshooter, of course, fighting initiate archery, and alert, or lucky resilient if you want some more defensive options. This is pretty straightforward. You can deal a lot of damage with crossbow expert and sharpshooter, and it's ranged, so it's better than melee, as you don't have to run after people. If enemies get close, you can use your reaction to deflect attacks, and your steel defender can help you out. So you also have this little steel defender, and you mentioned that big hulking metal pet of yours that is getting in the way of anyone trying to rush you as an archer that you are. The other type of battlesmith is a melee one. This goes with the other tried and true combo of great weapon master and polearm master. So you get again a bonus action attack that is compatible with great weapon master to boost your damage similar to sharpshooter on the ranged option. Then you take sentinel, keep enemies close, and you and your still defender can rip them to shreds. And then pick warcaster or resilient lucky whatever works for you but warcaster will help you because you're in the thick of battle and maybe sometimes it's better to make an opportunity attack that is a spell that's up to you plus you pad your concentration saving throws so your constitution has advantage in those saves additionally you're going to have the potential for a reach weapon with polearm master which means you could be keeping your distance while your steel defender stays next to whoever you're going after kind of keeping them in place you can attack with your polearm reach and then back up so that they have to choose to go for your steel defender or move past the steel defender for an opportunity attack to get to you. And don't forget you can cast things like green flame blade or booming blade as a reaction with warcaster. Just make sure that it's going to be compatible with your polearm and the range that you're doing. That can get a little dicey. No pun intended. And again, you might take green flame blade because you are taking sentinel. You might not actually allow people to move away from you. So there you go. So those are my top choices for some subclass specific feats for artificers. I know there's a lot of redundancies. Basically, a lot of feats have really risen to the top. If you're going martial, it's often best to go for a build that uses great weapon master, polearm master, or a ranged option of crossbow expert and sharpshooter. And the ranged option is typically better. Dungeons and Dragons, things fly around, and melee can't always get to them. And then a lot of spell casting feats and initiative based feats or padding your saving throws and concentration type feats. Those are really the lessons to learn when you're picking feats in D&D 5th edition is there some niche ones that you could pick but those ones I just kind of listed off just now are often the best ones to consider with whether you're a spellcaster or a martial class just keep that in mind it'll help you sort through your own feat selections in the future all you artificers out there while you're tinkering make sure that you take time to subscribe on our channel so that you always know when we have a video coming out me and Opal my wife and please make sure to comment down below if you like these feat recommendations or if you would twist them a little bit I won't take anything personally it's a very very subjective topic and so I'm just hoping to inspire someone or help them narrow down their choices. Y'all have a good adventure this weekend and I will see you in the next video. Bye.